So I just watched this documentary about Roy Lichtenstein. It's called Wham Blam, Roy Lichtenstein and the Arts of Appropriation. It's a really compelling conversation about borrowing versus stealing. For those that don't know, Roy Lichtenstein was uh, one of the founders of the pop art movement of the 1960s alongside Andy Warhol. Think about those Warhol paintings of the Campbell's soup can. I'm wearing a pop art shirt. The idea is that you take something that's low, that's mundane, everyday and ordinary, and you transform it into something that's high art and it represents us, it says something about society. Now, Roy Lichtenstein has become a huge icon in the art scene and his paintings are selling for as much as $150 million. The problem is Roy Lichtenstein was copying art from comic books. Uh, there are over, there, there's a guy in the documentary that when he first realized that Lichtenstein was copying uh, comics, panel for like the full panel shot composition, maybe he changed a word or he would change the color of the hair. Uh, they're almost identical. He got he has over 300 examples of Roy Lichtenstein copying comic book creators who of course made a day wage. They were talking about 1950s, early 1960s. People like Russ Heath. Um, and there was no system in place to protect the original comics creators because they didn't own the characters that they were drawing. They were just drawing it. So when that art gets copied by someone and transformed into something that's high art and then sold for $150 million, the original artist doesn't only, not only does he not benefit, but people don't even know he created it in the first place. So there's this ethical debate at the center of Wham Blam. And it's a fascinating debate because it applies to so many other things. Of course, I'm thinking about movies. Now with music, let's talk about that really quick because music has a system in place to protect original artists. If you sample a song in your song, you gotta pay royalties to the original creator. You gotta put it in the liner notes that you borrow, you know, the like used by permission from so-and-so. There's nothing like that for movies. And I think about all of the movies that borrow shots from other films or I mean, is it borrowing or is it stealing? That's the conversation. When does borrowing become stealing? Now, Tarantino is a master at borrowing elements from other movies. He borrows music from other movies. He borrows uh, dialogue from other movies. You know, the, the speech that Samuel Jackson gives, the Bible verse speech from Pulp Fiction, is lifted almost verbatim from a Sonny Chiba movie from the 1970s. Tarantino didn't write that. He took it from something else. Do we know... I think more people do know now because of home media being where it's at. But I know that, like, I've mentioned this in the past, and people are like, oh, I had no idea that that's from a Sonny Chiba movie. There's, a, you know, the dance scene from Pulp Fiction is, uh, it's, it's pretty much lifted from a movie called Eight and a Half that I know Quentin Tarantino loves. These are his homages to the things that influenced him. But if we don't know about it, if we don't know, and we've lost our connection to the original, when does it be stop becoming an homage and start to become something more... When do we credit Tarantino with the creation of that? That's the problem. It's crediting uh, an artist with the creation of something that they're borrowing from someone else. That's what's at the heart of the Lichtenstein documentary. That's what's at the heart of this conversation. When I watch The Untouchables, and I love the scene of the baby carriage going down the stairs, I don't know that De Palma is homaging Battleship Potemkin. You know, I, when I see Apocalypse Now and there's the whole Ride of the Valkyries scene, I don't realize that that's Coppola paying homage to D.W. Griffith. Now, here's part of the problem. How many people out there know who D.W. Griffith is? How many people out there who have watched D.W. Griffith movies? Because these are movies from the 20s. These are, you know, silent era films and into the sound era. But here's the other question. How many people out there haven't seen Apocalypse Now? And you don't even know what I'm talking about. Because that's the thing. As we get further from the sources of these things, the connection we have between them, uh, between us and them, gets severed. And, it, you know, there's new movies being made all the time. Every day. You know, every week we got new movies in theaters, new movies on streaming. Old movies just keep getting older. And so we're losing our connection with the sources. Is there an obligation to say, as a filmmaker as a producer, whoever, to say this scene, you know, maybe in the credits of the movie, this dialogue taken from this source, uh, this scene, you know, 
after it, with comics that's what you do if you're copying someone else's comic work now you put your name and then you put after and then the original creator's name like Russ Heath or somebody like that you know Gil Kane or whoever John Romita uh, there's nothing really like that in place for movies and it's one of the only mediums that's not doing that so that's yet another thing we can add to the conversation that we're having already about creators being fairly compensated for their work and being recognized for their creations that's why the writers are on strike that's why SAG AFTRA is on strike right now is because they don't feel like they're being seen and appreciated and they're on strike uh, there are so many instances like some of them are innocuous, right? When we think about the, the opening crawl, so many people now associate the Star Wars crawl with Star Wars. That's George Lucas directly lifting it from Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon created that. That's what Flash Gordon was famous for. Like it made the idea of the crawl coming out from the bottom of the screen to the top. It, it invented that. But how many people even know? How many people even watch the Flash Gordon serial, right? We associate it with Star Wars now. Is there any responsibility for George Lucas to be like, well, actually, that's from Flash Gordon. I mean, the Star Wars movies, especially the first Star Wars movie, is just filled wall to wall with bits from serials, even Indiana Jones. They're a love letter to the serials that Spielberg and uh, and George Lucas grew up with. So it's not new. You know, there's the, there's a scene in The Shining that's almost directly like another film. The Ryan Johnson, star, talking about Star Wars, the Ryan Johnson Star Wars, The Last Jedi uh, film, uh, has a shot. It's like a, a tracking shot that comes in and goes over the, a table and it's directly lifted from a movie called Wings. For, I think it's the 20s. Uh, th th is there any obligation for the director to say, by the way, that's a shot from so-and-so. Now he does, Ryan Johnson was very clear about it on social media and in, I guess, like Reddit AMAs and things like that. But is there a responsibility to put that in the film, in the credits, so that people know that? Furthermore, if they did put something like that in the credits, would, who would care? Do we want that from our movies or do we want to just know like, well, every piece of art borrows from another piece of art because they do. That's how art is made. You take something, you steal from the best, you incorporate it into your own work and you hope that something different comes out. I guess the problem begins as this documentary analyzes when it's not different at all and it's just a one-to-one -one copy of something that already exists and you're taking all the credit and all the money for something that you didn't create, for something that you've appropriated and passed off as your own. What's the responsibility of the artist to say, by the way, I didn't create this. It's really tricky. There's no easy answers here. That's why I wanted to have this, uh, have this conversation with you guys in a video because it's a really nuanced topic and there's gonna be so many different opinions, uh, but I think it's fascinating, right? And I worry, but like Serial at Midnight is super history focused, right? That I was a history major in college. It runs through my reviews. It runs in the kind of things that I talk about. It, like this video, my, my loyalty is to history. I was a history education major. That's what I want to do with this channel is talk about history, connect you guys with everything that already exists in the past. And uh, I, this documentary, I mean, I highly recommend it because it's such an interesting debate. You get the people that didn't know that Lichtenstein was copying from comic book creators, and you get the people that didn't care. There's multiple people in this movie that are like, I've, the, the biographer of Roy Lichtenstein says, I just don't think that's a very interesting conversation. We're talking about stealing from people that died in poverty while these paintings sell for tens of millions of dollars. And he says, that's just not interesting to me. How do you make somebody care about something that they're not interested in? This is where we're at. This is what this is where our society is at right now, and this documentary kind of captures a zeitgeist that's uh, becoming more and more of a thing as we want to do better and we want to credit artists. We want to see the people who create things succeed off of their creations. Unfortunately, with comics and with this subject matter, uh, there's you know many decades of comics not taking care of their creators. So we're trying to do better now. Uh, I wish that this could have happened while some of the people in this documentary were still alive. But we're having the conversation now. The movie is Wham Blam, Roy Lichtenstein and the Art of Appropriation. It's brand new on DVD from Kino Lorber. I'm going to hold this up if you want to freeze that and read it. It just came out about a month ago. I highly recommend it. And I want to know what you guys think about the topic at hand. When does borrowing become theft? Does a creator have any responsibility to tell people where he's getting his sources from? That's what we're talking about. Continue the conversation in the comments below. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Take care. Till next time, I will catch you later.